Hey everyone, this lesson is on clindamycin, and in this lesson we're going to talk about how clindamycin works, what are the bacteria it targets, and also what are the side effects of clindamycin use. So let's get started. Clindamycin is in the class of lincosamide antibiotics. Here is an image of clindamycin. As you can see, it has a pyrrolidine ring in its structure. Now, clindamycin has good GI absorption, which is important, so we can give it PO, but it's a bit hard on the GI tract. Also important to note that it does not cross the blood-brain barrier, but has very good bone penetration. So in fact, it has increased bone penetration. And this will become important when we decide what we want to use clindamycin for. So what are some of the bacteria that clindamycin target? Clindamycin works well for gram-positive aerobe coverage, so streptococcus, staphylococcus, and in even some cases, MRSA, pneumococcus, but has no coverage of enterococcus. Clindamycin also has very good anaerobic coverage for bacteria like Bacteroides, Fusiobacterium, and B. fragilis. These are bacteria that can be involved in oral infections. It can also be useful for other types of infections like chlamydia, toxoplasma, and pneumocystis. And an important point to note is that clindamycin is not effective against gram-negative aerobes. So this generally focuses our use for clindamycin on anaerobes and anaerobic coverage. Some infections that we use clindamycin to treat are, again, some of those infections involving anaerobes. Some of these include intra-abdominal and pelvic infections, aspiration, pneumonia, and lung abscesses. We can also use it for skin soft tissue infection. We can also use it for osteomyelitis. And we use it for osteomyelitis because, as I mentioned before, it has increased bone penetration. So it's very good for osteomyelitis. We can also use it for acne and also use it for those oral infections because, again, it covers anaerobes well. And another important point to note about clindamycin is that it can be used in conjunction with other antibiotics in certain cases. And one of those cases is toxic shock syndrome. So in toxic shock syndrome, clindamycin can be used in conjunction with a penicillin because of clindamycin's mechanism of action in that it actually inhibits protein synthesis. So in toxic shock syndrome, there is an excess production of bacterial toxins. So clindamycin can actually shut down or reduce some of that toxin protein synthesis. So that leads us into its mechanism of action. So as I alluded, it inhibits protein synthesis. And in doing so, it generally is a bacteriostatic antibiotic. But in certain cases, depending on concentration, depending on the organism, it can also be bactericidal. So how does it inhibit protein synthesis? Well, it binds to the 50S ribosome to inhibit the protein synthesis. So again, clindamycin inhibits or binds to the 50S subunit of a bacterial ribosome, leading to a reduced protein synthesis. So again, this is very important as this is its mechanism of action against anaerobic um, bacteria but also in the case of using it for other special cases like toxic shock syndrome. So again, no antibiotic comes without its risks. And with clindamycin, it has a particular propensity to increase risk of pseudomembranous colitis. And pseudomembranous colitis is due to a Clostridium difficile infection. And in fact, clindamycin can increase the likelihood of having a C. difficile infection because C. difficile is resistant to clindamycin. Other adverse reactions to clindamycin include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, abdominal cramps and pain, and having a metallic taste. And this is generally with higher concentrations of clindamycin. With regards to topical administration of clindamycin, it can increase the risk of contact dermatitis and increase the risk for secondary fungal infections. So this is a lesson on clindamycin. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. As well, please check out my other antibiotic lessons in my infectious disease playlist. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.